Hey, it's Buddy from Root and Earth again. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. It's been a long winter and it's amazing to be back out in the woods and have some warm temperatures. Um, today I am hunting morels, which are mushrooms in the family Morchella. They are one of the most sought after culinary mushrooms and they are also a mushroom which causes a huge amount of frustration in the minds of new beginners to foraging and part of the reason for that is that they are just insanely hard to see if you are not familiar with them and another reason is that the window of time that they emerge in the early spring is so small that if you go by information that you read in books, they generally give you a three to four month time frame in which they say that morels appear. And um, in reality, in your given location, they are really only going to be around for like, if you're lucky, four weeks. But generally, when I start to see them, within three weeks, they have come and gone. And if you're not out, you've missed them. So a few things about them to keep in mind is that rather than going by date, I personally tend to watch conditions that are going on. And the conditions that I'm looking for are low temps at night that never dip below 50 degrees when the soil temperature hits about 50 to 55 degrees the mycelium becomes active and shortly thereafter will begin to produce fruit um so i'm looking for about a one to two week spell of low temps never below 50. they can dip a little bit and the morels can even freeze without getting too badly damaged but uh, it's that extended period of 50 plus lows that will help you to find these another important thing is habitat these are mycorrhizal mushrooms that are interacting with the rootlets of a host species of tree in the southeast where I live, which is specifically Western North Carolina and Northwestern South Carolina, um, the tree species that I am on the lookout for before I ever think about looking for mushrooms are tulip poplar, white oak, any type of ash tree, so like hickories. Um, those are the main ones that I'm looking for. Tulip poplar in particular in my locale seems to produce better than anything else. Um, once I find an area that is dominated mostly by tulip poplar, I will be looking for low-lying areas, usually near a creek, and that's the type of area that I am in at this very moment. Once I find that type of habitat, I am looking then at understory plants and um, where I find the most tends to be fairly overgrown thickets that are pretty difficult to fight your way through, but it can be very rewarding if you do so. Um, I find them in lots of thickets of privet which is an invasive species here, and I don't know if the morels are actually interacting with the rootlets of the privet, but they sure do seem to spring up close to the trunks of the privet uh, bushes. That's the type of area I'm in today, and I will show you now. Um, I'm in a low-lying area. There's a creek right over there. You can see I'm ducked down in a thicket and uh, you almost have to crawl to get through this type of environment, which is another reason that people have so much trouble finding these mushrooms. Um, they just don't grow. They also grow out in open spaces. If you can be lucky enough to know where there might be an old apple orchard, those can be gold mines, but you just need to be really careful because if they have been sprayed, these mushrooms will have accumulated the chemicals in them and you really do not want to be eating those so if you're collecting them from orchards they need to be very old orchards and 
have not been sprayed any time recently for sure, preferably ever. Um, once you have found a good habitat, a few other understory plants that I look for are cleavers, chickweed, um, some grass, but it's usually sparse in the areas I'm in. Wild rose, Rosa rugosa, it's everywhere. It's highly annoying when it bites into you. Um, but those are the main plants that I'm looking for. And uh, also the soil type. The morels in my area, they seem to like a soft, sandy loam. Not too much sand, and the soil around my area is red clay, but where I find them tends to be a more black, somewhat rich, but sandy, loamy, well-drained soil but in fairly low-lying areas. Now, all of the rules, like with all of mushroom hunting, are not hard and fast. Mushrooms do what mushrooms like to do and want to do, and you can't really fit them into a box. But uh, once I have found habitats like the ones that I'm sitting in and that I've been describing, I start to look very closely because more often than not, people will either walk right over these or right past them because a lot of times they are just barely peeking out of the leaves and they're very hard to see. It's like an Easter egg hunt. You need to learn to relax your eyes, look for color, texture, and form, but the form of these can vary greatly so you never know what you're looking for until you see it. And so it's highly frustrating, but when you start to find them, it is extremely rewarding. Now, I happen to be sitting in a patch of them right now that I came across, and uh, let me give you a look at the variation of what you're looking for. Um, so, there's one peeking out right there. And it's a little bit burned from some cold weather we had, but that's not a problem for the edibility. As you can see, there's a few more. If I come around here through the privet, there's another one. And When you start to look around when you're in an area like this, if you find one, go to a spot where you're not going to lose its location, get down on your knees, possibly even sit down, and start to really scan the whole entire area around you in all directions because if you have found one, more than likely you are sitting near five to ten at least possibly hundreds you never know um, here's a few more hiding in there and I don't know if you can see that one right back there and there's a nice big one here, which is, that one's pretty easy to see as more else go, but then you gotta look sharp because look over here, you don't see much of anything, and yet, ta-da, there's a huge one hiding under the leaves. So, as you can see, a lot of the time, you may only be able to see a tiny portion of the mushroom peeking out from under the leaves, so it's really important to move extra, extra slow. Keep your eyes peeled. It will give you a headache if you spend too long doing it, so as you're learning, take it in spells. Don't overdo yourself because you do not want to get a horrible headache from looking for these, but Take your time, pay attention to the trees, pay attention to the habitat, and uh, that's the only way to learn to find these. I spent a lot of time 
years before I ever found one. And especially here in the Southeast, they are not as abundant as they are in other parts of the country where people find truckloads. And so just keep that in mind if you're in the Southeast that time and patience eventually pays off. When you find a good patch, never share that information, even with your best friend, because they will be there. It's a fever. People catch it, and they will come, and they will poach your spots. So hold it close to your chest. Now that I'm in a spot with a little better lighting, let's talk a little bit about identification of these mushrooms. They are a cap and stem mushroom, the stem tends to be a good bit lighter than the cap color. The cap has deep pitting. And it's really important to know that they are pits. They are not folds. They are not wrinkles. It's pitted a little bit like honeycomb. And um, there are quite a few different species and they can vary in size and color. This is what people call blonde or um, some people might call this Morcella esculenta. Some people might call it Morcella americana, but we have quite a few species. Some only grow very tiny and they tend to be more gray in color. They are much harder to see and to find. Um, these are the ones that most people are on the hunt for when they're looking. They can be quite a bit bigger than this, um, but regardless of size or color, the key characteristics on all of the species are going to be the same, and that is cap and stem mushroom, very pitted cap, the cap can vary widely in shape. It can be short, squat, round, tall, pointed, curled over, but it will always be pitted heavily like this. And it is not separated at the bottom where it meets the stem. It just sort of turns into the stem. If you were to cut this lengthwise in half, um, the whole entire inside of this would be completely hollow. It would not have any feathery or um, cottony type of filling to it, which some of the quote-unquote look-alikes would have. Um, really, these are quite easy to identify. There's nothing that looks very much like these. And in fact, I have never found any quote false morels in my area during the season that I find these. Um, so the key identifiers are always the same. They're very simple. Pitted cap, hollow entirety of the mushroom from top to bottom, completely hollow, growing on the ground, growing early in the spring, and that's really about it for identification. They are quite easy to identify, just very hard to find. Thank you so much for checking out another video. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are always appreciated and really help out my channel as it grows. If you would like to check out some of the products that I make along with my beautiful and talented fiance, check out our website at www.rootandearth.com. I hope you guys will come back for another one. I will have plenty more content coming now that the season has changed, and uh, happy hunting.